Oh, I, I don't think it's that. <laughs> well, why didn't they cheer then? Why didn't they cheer that? It's a pretty damn serious issue. Whether Maybe or not the Iran applause sign and lights weren't on. Well, no. maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> All right, next student. Larry, this is Ryan. He's a recent graduate. What's your question for the panel? Well, one group that we haven't talked about yet is uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, we've heard both candidates praise entrepreneurs and on entrepreneurship. But uh, on Election Day, how do you believe they will actually vote in terms of policy? Ben, you're our entrepreneur expert. You are, I'm not really you an entrepreneur. Well, you're our capitalist friend. Well, I, I, I am I'm a, a fan profound of believer I'm a in fan of capitalism. I'm not really a capitalist. You're not I Ayn Rand. I just hide in my little cell and write. <laughs> but anyway, but I, I think both sides are quite friendly to entrepreneurs, although clearly the Republicans want less regulation. There's no doubt about that. And the entrepreneurs, I don't think I've ever met an entrepreneur who wasn't staunchly Republican, especially the ones I meet in North Idaho, where my wife and I spend the summer, are extremely staunchly Republican, but they're Republican for other reasons, too. Donald Trump a help or a hindrance? Uh, you know, I, I have such a negative opinion of him, I, I can't even start to describe it, so I, I, I better not even start. I don't want to get... Are you, you saying God, God bless it does him. not help Mr. Romney to have him out there? I don't want to say anyway. God bless him. I mean, I hope. I'll say. <laughs> ben. I'll, I'll say. I'll say. I'm not because I'm not a capitalist. I'm not afraid of Mr. Trump. But uh, no, he. I think he's irrelevant right now at this point. Seriously. I mean, before he was, and, and before some of what he said could be helpful or it could be, you know, very hurtful. Uh, he's a polarizing figure to a degree. Then he, again, he's a celebrity. We love celebrities. Arnold Schwarzenegger was governor of our state here. Um, but right now, I think he's irrelevant. He, that's a very good way. Let's hope that's true. <laughs> <laughs> David, what's next on the board? Larry, let's talk about Joe Biden. Before the president, when he spoke, he was fired up and Twitter was blowing up watching him. David Korn tweeting, Biden goes all dead. Hashtag bless him. Gabrielle writing in, Osama bin Laden is dead and General Motors is alive. That was an actual quote from Joe Biden, followed by Jonah who wrote, Wait, General Motors is alive? I thought corporations he, he, weren't He's people. one of the best writers in America, by the way, Jonah Goldberg. He writes Jonah Goldberg. Review. He's an incredibly good writer. That was his tweet. Evelyn tweeting, and if you look at Mitt Romney on Twitter, all he does is bash President Obama. If you look at Barack Obama on Twitter, he barely mentions Romney. The ghost writer tweeting in, Joe Biden is on a war path. And then finally, Jeff writing in, shouldn't the president fulfill his earlier promises before making a bunch more? Hashtag where are the jobs? Larry, we've got another question from you, courtesy of Twitter. Viewer wants to know, do you prefer television or the Internet? Uh. I think it's all the same to me. To me, I'm a communicator. This is communicating. Radio, television, print. It's all a matter of expressing what, what my guests feel out to the public. So the delivery system is different. But basically, what we're doing here, I did in 1960 in Miami, Florida. I did debate panels around that election. It was the same thing. We were delivering on a television to local channels, and I'm doing the same now worldwide. Do you think I, you have younger viewers here? I'm, I'm seeing a lot I of tweets. I always say they're younger. I, I'm seeing a lot of tweets for you. We're so glad to see Larry back on the air from people who are in their mid-20s. Well, it's nice to know. It's nice. The young people are obviously Mostly on. I think that's mostly on. And I want, and I want to go back to my good friend Donald Trump. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I, I, have no doubt, I have no doubt that he's an intelligent guy. I have no doubt he's a capable guy of high integrity. But I mean, who wears orange hair? What kind of a person wears when orange hair? When you have that hair? much money, you should be able to get a better stylist. Okay, I would agree right. with you. Okay. Ben, we oh. just checked. Donald Trump has not said anything on Twitter I'm since sure Obama spoke. I'm sure he's not on <laughs> He's checking the births again. Right. Uh, we want to remind you, do you see a little clicker on your screen on the bottom? All you got to do is push it bottom or top, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can subscribe as well by going to youtube.com slash TV. You'll get complete debate coverage next month, election night coverage as well, so reminding you to go to that. Uh, what part did uh, uh, John in the polling do the, do the women play in regard to Michelle Obama and Ann Romney? Uh, is that significant or is it discounted? Well, uh, you know, a first lady can hurt, uh, or a first lady nominee can hurt a candidate, not necessarily help. In this instance, this entire convention uh, was about rallying the base. You know, I did see some tweets tonight that, uh, you know, this was mainly red meat uh, and, and that, that, that no one, including um, Michelle, uh, uh, you know, appeal to independent voters. I don't think independent voters are even watching this convention. Uh, really? They, they seldom do. 
Uh, they really don't focus until the debates, and then increasingly so at the end. But How many people I, watch she's the certainly debates? A good image. How many people will be watching the debates if past patterns hold good? Oh, if past patterns hold good, you know, you're looking at at 60 million. Why don't independent voters? Mm. I would gather mm. they'd be the number one to watch. Mm. They don't know yet how they're going to vote. They're independent. They want to learn. Yeah, it, it, except that these are the people that both parties are trying to so hard to uh, uh, talk about, not address, but talk about. These are the people that are trying to get the kids to school on time, have enough uh, uh, of a meal to pack a lunch, and uh, you know keep a job or keep two jobs. And essentially, they have other things to do than read white papers and uh, and spend prime time watching uh, bloviating. I think also because right. the conventions about uh, the conventions are a pep, pep rally. It is for the base. It is for the choir that they've preached to. It, it's to get them in, in excited. It's like you know to be cheerleaders to bring them from here until to November on both sides. Of the but end. I think the country has changed in terms of its interest in politics generally. I mean, I, I can remember vividly in the 50s and 60s when the conventions were on. There was gavel to gavel network coverage on all yeah. three networks. Everyone in the country but was you, watching them. Every TV in every household was watching them. Now it's it's a sideshow. Well, do you remember when Ted Koppel and Nightline pulled out? They stopped covering conventions. Uh, I saw Ted a couple of weeks ago saying he thought conventions were irrelevant. You know the outcome. It's all speeches, right? It's not the Super Bowl where you don't know right. who's going to win. Right. right. It's a very good point. Very good Someone point. called and asked where Hillary was. Uh, Hillary Clinton is in China in major talks with officials in the Chinese government. She is still the Secretary of State. Of the United States, <laughs> David. And Larry, there was a great photo last night of Hillary mm. actually watching her husband. She was seated at a chair at the embassy on computer as Bill Clinton spoke last night. This is a junior uh, from UCLA. Uh, give us your name and your comment. You weren't very happy with uh, the convention. Right. Hi, my name is Mary, and as an undecided voter, I was very frustrated by both of the conventions. I thought all the speeches were base rallying, insubstantial, not nearly specific enough, full of the same copy-paste journey to the American dream story. I'm very afraid that the debates will be very similar, will be uninformative, and that the candidates will respond in vague um, vote pandering answers and I think that the whole election is a soundbite driven celebrity infused circus. Wow. So right now you don't know who you're voting for? I don't have a clue. I want to say that I'm considering not voting at all but that's not going to solve anything. Don't do that. Yeah, what do you make of that? Well, I, I think it's sad that somebody feels, you know, such, you know, apathy but what you're talking about is, is not only where America is but it's where voters always are. It really doesn't come down to what a number it is. It comes down to the perception of that number. Your perception of these events is, I, I feel, very accurate. But that's what the conventions are about and what they're for. I feel that the debates, in my opinion, are, are much different. There are specific questions. They're not reading a scripted speech on a teleprompter they practice over and over. They're not speaking to the troops. They're defending their background to each other. They're clearly making the point for why they have a better plan what, and pointing out flaws in other plans. But so I would hope they, that you can make a decision. Sometimes but, they go off question. But, yeah, yeah. But as to you know, the young lady's point about uh, the lack of specificity, I think she's raising a, a very important point. Uh, I can remember in 68 when Mr. Nixon was running against Mr. Humphrey, there was each side made incredibly detailed position papers on every aspect of the economy, foreign right. policy, defense policy, labor policy, health policy, like, like in volumes from the Encyclopedia Britannica on each issue. You could go into the most minute detail and they had panels of incredibly important experts on each subject on both sides. They don't even do that anymore. They have a few words on a website. They don't do it at all. They have no depth of whatsoever. If you're thinking to yourself, oh, back at, there at headquarters of Romney or headquarters of Mr. Obama, they, they have some detail. They don't have it there either. They don't have it anywhere. It's not there. Howard uh, Ragman, according mm -hmm. to what Ben just said, we are less informed now. Um, it kind of cuts both ways. I certainly think that social media is one of the main reasons that we don't have these position papers because nobody, you know, it's much easier to run if you have much less of a record in this day and age. If you're a politician who's been serving for 20, 25 years, you've made a lot of votes, you've probably compromised a lot of votes along the way, and they're going to come back and they're going to haunt you. But at the same time that social media, the internet has given us a chance to be very informed, 
But what happens is so many of these websites are so partisan, Larry. And what I really encourage people to do when they say, how do I sort this out, is look at both sides. Look at if you're a Democrat, look at the Republican websites. Look at if you're a Republican, look at the Democratic websites. Look at the ones that claim to be and are impartial and then make your own choice. But, you know, there's uh, the young lady from UCLA. She's got to look at her own position in life. There was a book a few years ago called What's the Matter with Kansas, a brilliant book about how people got others to vote against their own self-interest. It's a really good time to look at your own self-interest. Well, but um, with, with the greatest respect to my former neighbor, Mr. Bragman, uh, even if you went to their website, you wouldn't find much. The websites are incredibly thin and sparse in terms of detail. There's not much going on there either. And there's not much going on even if you talk to people from the campaigns in great detail. I mean, I know some of the people who are extremely high up on the Republican side, and they're wonderful people, and I love them to death, but they don't have any details or specifics either. And they don't have, and they're experts experts don't have any details. I mean, you talk to the people who are the big powers in economics on each, either side, they don't have any details either. And Leslie, in tweets, you're limited to words, right? Yes, characters, yeah. <laughs> so you yeah, can't even go in-depth right. tweeting, right? Right, no, no, ab absolutely. But, you know, uh, although I, I, I don't feel that one should vote based on one issue, there has to be something to the young lady, I forgot her name, I apologize, um, uh, from UCLA. I mean, like, what's most important to you? You know what I mean? I mean, obviously, for the, you know, Hispanic, you know, population, for many of them, it might be immigration, uh, the, the DREAM Act. Uh, for those in the gay community, it might be, you know, gay marriage. Uh, women, it might be reproductive rights. Now, I'm not saying that always. You know, that is certainly a, a sweeping generalization with, a, you know, a broad uh, sweep uh, brush there. But... There, there definitely are two different sides to these issues with these candidates. Well, before I get back to, to Dave, John, uh, I interviewed uh, George Gallup once, and he said when they poll in presidential elections, <clears throat> I don't know if this is true, they don't ask who are you voting for. They'll ask about a bunch of issues, and based on the answers to the issues, they make a supposition who they're voting for. He said that it was a dumb question to just say who you're voting for. Is that the same? Do you, do you do that? Oh, no, I certainly ask who you're going to vote for. It's a basic question, not necessarily the most interesting question we ask, because we will ask about a lot of issues and attach those issues and different sides of issues to values so that they matter to people. So rather than you say, are you for abortion or against abortion, attach life and the meaning of life to choice and the meaning of choice to really get at what's in the hearts and minds. But no, we all ask, and what including Gallup today. What happens, open? John, when a poll goes wrong? We'll never forget 1948, when uh, Dewey was so far ahead of Truman that they stopped polling. The people stopped paying for polls three weeks out, and Truman won. If you were polling in the Kerry-Bush race in 2004, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at CNN headquarters in New York, yes. we thought Kerry was going to win with exit polling. We had Carl it wrong. Rove never had any doubt. They had it wrong. What? So Carl Rove never had any doubt. <coughs> well, he's saying <laughs> that Romney's going to win this. No, time. no, he's about he had <coughs> never any doubt about that election. What do you do, uh, uh, John, when polls go wrong? I think you know you're talking about an exit poll, and frankly, I don't think exit polls should ever be used to project the winner in an, in an election. I think that the actual count of votes should. We don't need to know at 9.01 Eastern time or 10.02 Eastern time who won. The value of exit polls are who voted and how they voted the way that, and why they voted the way they did. What happens to a pollster when the polls are wrong? I can tell you I suck my thumb and lie in a fetal position in the corner. I've been a couple. <laughs> who pays for your polls? Uh, generally, you know, when we're looking at uh, uh, these kinds of races, uh, I, I'm paid by media. And so I've, I've got a, uh, several media clients. Newsmax is, is one, and uh, uh, the Washington Times is another this cycle. But I have polled for NBC and Reuters and C-SPAN and newspapers. John, are, John oh, can I ask you a question? a question for you, yeah. yeah. Are your polls um, done uh, auto, like, you know, robocalls, or the actual people calling? Well, we, we do both. We okay. do live callers. It's a much more expensive proposition these days, I can tell you. And then we also do robocalls. And, and frankly, Leslie, we also do internet. 
polls as well, and they they all uh, they're all about the same in terms Who's, of results. Who John is asking the questions? Who are your pollsters? Uh, those are uh, call center uh, uh, people who've been trained. Uh, they're not biased. Uh, over the years, I, you know, I, I sold a piece of my company, but over the years, uh, uh, it was our, our own call center right up here in upstate New York. David? Larry, from one poll to another, this has to do with Google. Prior to the president's speech, Google asked, what do Americans want to see in Obama's speech? Here's what's interesting. We always hear so much uh, about the social issues, but actually in the poll, the first thing Americans said they wanted to hear, it's non-scientific, of course, was about job creation, then health care, then federal deficit reduction, and social issues actually came forth. Speaking of social issues, James is currently enrolled at UCLA. You had an interesting comment you wanted to make in a question for the panel regarding uh, gay rights, gay issues. What is it? Going back to what we were talking about earlier, um, as the narrative goes that the uh, Republicans are a party of the white people and Democrats are diverse, if you look at exit polling for uh, Prop 8 here in California or uh, North, North Carolina's uh, Constitutional Amendment 1, demographics that would levitate towards the Demo uh, Democratic Party actually far less supported gay rights than whites and Asians who are thought to more likely vote Republican. So I understand, I understand the difference in the platforms, but how does it, when you look at uh, exit polling, how does that play out in the narrative? Keep going. I think uh, the gay rights issue is a complicated issue because it, it, there are an awful lot of gay people who are white and there are an awful lot of gay, both gay men and gay women, so uh, you're not going to get that uh, breakdown that you would uh, normally between de Democrats and Republicans. Also, black Americans mm -hmm. resent being hooked to gay Americans. Uh, I remember the great fight in Miami over a gay issue, and 98% of the blacks in Miami voted against the gay, or there was an ordinance to mm -hmm. gay rights to rent apartments and houses and everything, because they didn't regard it as a civil right issue. Well, not only that, but um, there's a religious tie-in. I mean, there are a lot of the African-American population that are Christians, and um, they don't agree with gays being able to marry, but at the end of the day, they're still going to vote for the president. We have a job report coming out tomorrow. Ben? I don't know what it's going to be. Will it matter? <laughs> It does. I, I don't think it's going to matter unless it's a dramatically higher or dramatically lower number. But you know, your question about does it matter is really, really a good question. I, I would love to know for our people out in the audience, the great majority of them, it, will their lives change very much no matter who wins? I mean, I was thinking to myself as I was lying in bed with my dog this afternoon, a standard afternoon occupation for me. I was thinking, the health and well-being of my dog matters so much more to me than who wins this election. It's night and day. And I was thinking, I bet that's true of most people, that the health and well-being of their pets counts for more than, than whether the Democrats what, or Republicans win. Well, of course. Because, because my point is the parties are so similar, they've gotten to, everybody's been squeezed right to the middle, that it just doesn't even matter mm -hmm. that but much. But this race is not the middle, then. I, I, I think it is the middle. I don't think there's that much difference between the two parties. You really, you can't I don't. see a clear difference? I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't see a clear difference. I see a difference, but not a big difference. It's certainly yeah, not let's the... Let's say Congressman Ryan and Joe Biden. I think the difference is night and day. I, I don't think there'd be much of a difference in terms of how the actual government ran and how it affected my life and my wife's life and my son's and daughter-in-law's and granddaughter's life. I don't think it'd be much of a difference at all. Our taxes would be higher, but not dramatically higher. I don't see there'd be much of a is difference. Is Tip O'Neill right? Is all politics local? Uh, I, I, there's not much of a difference in local politics either, unless, unless they're going to allow people to have all-night parties in Beverly Hills at night, the way they still seem to do right now. But I, I'd like to... Uh, I, I just think politics is very largely irrelevant to daily life in the United States of America. I, I hate to say that I agree with Ben on that point. I don't agree that the, the parties are so similar, but I, I, when people, you know, say, I'm going to move if, you know, President Obama is re-elected, <laughs> you know, uh, Alec Baldwin made a comment, you know, I mean, in the past, at the end of the day, you, you are correct in that. Our, you know, we're still going to get up, and if you, you know, brush your teeth and then have your orange juice and then hug your dog or whatever, you're, you're still going to do that. That's not going to change. The policies that they make can affect us, but they don't affect our daily oh, lives some that people, dramatically. Some people, if their candidate loses, will kick their dogs. That is a very good point. In and that, that, should, that should be a, there should be a law the about that. Pain. David? Larry, speaking of moving toward the middle uh, and moderates, 
You have a comment or a question, sir, about uh, Charlie Chris for the panel. Yes, uh, I've been seeing a general pattern with the Republican Party moving further and further to the right with the, uh, with w the waning number of moderate Republicans. Um, you know, Scott Brown has a really big chance of losing his seat. And Charlie Chris just today, you know, he endorsed uh, Barack Obama and was speaking at the convention. So to Ben Stein's point, I really disagree. I really do think there is a stark contrast between the two parties, and, and the Republican Party is moving hmm. further and further to the right. What do you make of Charlie Chris speaking, a la Joe Lieberman four years ago speaking for McCain? I, I think Charles Chris was never considered a firm, strong party man. I think he was never considered uh, a, a person you could trust. And I, I, I never met anybody who had a good word to say about him within the Republican Party when he was in the Senate or afterwards, so I'm not surprised. Do you think it mattered, Howard, what uh, the Charles Chris, the, the Chris of America, the re moderate Republicans, where are they? Uh, he you and I are both old enough to remember what a Rockefeller Republican was. And I A George I also, Romney Republican. I yeah, exactly. And I'm from Michigan. And I also I have to disagree with Ben. Uh, and I have to lose my objectivity for a minute. If Romney's elected and Republicans take over the House and the Senate, I'm legally married. My husband and I are legally married in the state of California. We were among the eighteen thousand couples that are grandfathered in. I have something to lose, and I'm not going to kick my dog. I'm going to kick someone else if they try and take my um, my marriage away from me. That's not going to make me happy at all. But I don't and think anyone's been. There. Have the Republicans proposed making yes, people who are not who are already marriage, married in California a not married? Yes, Romney has proposed a federal marriage amendment. But has he proposed absolutely. that if you are already married, that you're no yes. longer married? Yeah, absolutely. They want to take away. A, it, a federal marriage amendment would null and void yeah, it would. marriage. It well, then, 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 you, then you do have more in, in stake in this election than I do. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to, uh, to our YouTube channel. You can hit the button on the screen right there, or you can go to youtube.com slash Aura TV. You'll get debate coverage next month and the like. David? Uh, Larry, when we started, we asked people to go on your Facebook page and tell us in five words, maybe a little bit more, what you thought of the speech. Sheba writing in on your page, four more years. Rick saying, inspiring. Crystal, I've got his back. Averine, fierce. Tammy, four more years, baby. Shanique, forward. James, we need him or I am leaving for China. Larry, I've got a question for you. You tweeted earlier Sooner today, the better. regardless of politics, you like Bill Clinton's speech. After all the speeches you've seen, what did you think of tonight? I thought it was, uh, I, I, speeches at conventions generally rouse things up. The best speech I ever saw in my life, forgetting about it, was Mario Cuomo in 1984. I was in the hall. I was standing next to a representative from Oklahoma who said to me, I don't know who Mario Cuomo is. I'm a Democrat. I never heard of him. I know he's the governor of New York. Now I know why I'm a Democrat. Hmm. That was, do you remember that speech? Very well. Was that was an speech. incredible speech. I think, uh, I think... Uh, Ronald Reagan kicked the Ronald Reagan's Reagan. ass all over the world. Ronald Reagan made great convention speeches. I think that I like, to me, I like emotion. I thought Joe Biden was very effective. I like, I like, I like Maltz. that kind Maltz. of character. I like your answer. I, yeah. I got one more question for you, Mr. King. Favorite president you ever interviewed? Oh, Clinton. Anyone would say that. If you're going to interview a president, you want to interview Clinton. Clinton. Because his, he's a steel trap mind... Uh, as George Bush the first, George H. W. Bush yeah. said to me, "How can you not like Bill Clinton?" Well, Ben, my here comes Ben. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think what he did when he was in the Oval Office in terms of his behavior with Monica Lewinsky was absolutely disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. I mean, just disgraceful on a scale that's hard to top. But he's a great person to interview, oh, and I don't doubt it. What uh, was there a last? We'll, we'll, what? All right, let's go run around. John, what will be the lasting effect of both conventions? It, was Clinton the winner in both? Uh, I think absolutely. You know, I think what he did was he he got the uh, Barack Obama and the Democrats focused on uh, on the meaning of the campaign and the meaning of the last four years. Howard, uh, I think. Barack Obama is going to get a bump from this. If, if he can continue that momentum in the debates, uh, he won't have any problems. Uh, it's his to lose right now. Ben, what was the uh, number I, I, one thing at both conventions? 
Uh, this convention just had so much more life, so much more personality. Uh, but uh, to, to me, by the way, I want to back up and say, I, I don't, if, if, if Bill Clinton had been doing what he was doing with Monica Lewinsky in his home, it would not bother me the slightest little bit. It's the fact that he was the president. But the, uh, but, uh, the Democrats just were far more fired up, far more lively. Their candidate has far more personality, but they carry with them some very heavy baggage. They promised they were going to do every single thing they promised they were going to do, they promised they were going to do four years ago. They haven't done it. They are the party that denies the right to life of the most innocent among us, the unborn. This is a serious burden that they have to carry. By the way, the, plan the platform in the Republicans said life is life, so they don't excuse even rape or incest. Do you share that view? No, I don't. But uh, but if I, it is a life, what's the difference? If it was, I, I, it's still a life, because there are always countervailing considerations. But the Republicans don't. I, I don't agree with everything the Republicans do. I don't agree with tax cuts for wealthy people. I don't agree with tax cuts for corporations either. I mean, I'm uh, I've told you this many times. I'm an Eisenhower Republican. Yeah, you are. You're a classic guy. So for rape and incest, you would make a difference. I, an exception, yeah, for sure. As somebody who buried a child in 2004, is a pro-choice female and would never have an abortion, and as a Democrat, I really get irked when people just throw that kind of issue under a political party. In 1973, the Supreme Court made a decision called Roe v. Wade. That made the decision regarding abortion being legal in this country. No political I don't question party uh, did that. Uh, that you know, the Democrats are not, you know, tr trying to kill, you know, babies. Uh, um, with regard to the speeches, the president did what he needed to do tonight, and I felt it would be very difficult for him to do because Bill Clinton is one heck of an order, and last night he, he proved that. Um, he, he did what he needed to do. I, I agree with Howard he's going to get a bump. I agree with Howard it is his to lose. I agree with Ben that he will win, but it's going to be a nail-biter. It's going to be very tight. I don't think it's even going to be at all tight. You don't. It's no, tight right now. I, I don't think so. it's tight in the popular vote, but in terms of the electoral vote, I think it's going to be clear very but early. He is in leading the in all but one uh, swing gonna... state. All right, time for another student question. Elizabeth Larry wants to talk more about what Obama said tonight regarding Mitt Romney's inexperience on foreign policy. What's your question for the panel? Uh, yes, even though foreign policy has not been a prominent theme in this election, would it be to the Democrats' advantage to keep pushing that point that Romney Ryan? Um, they're not as experienced in that area as Obama Biden. I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Um, I, I was glad that there were some some jabs there. I mean, I was glad that he mentioned Russia, uh, you know, and, and, and Al Qaeda in the same sentence. I was glad that he mentioned China. I was even glad that he mentioned uh, Great Britain. And that comes down to that elitist look down your nose attitude that, you know, Mitt Romney has, which is, well, you know, I was on the Olympic Committee and did this in Salt Lake City. And, you know, I did the Who asked you? You're representing the United States. You want the job as commander-in-chief. Learn how to be diplomatic, because if you get the job, you're going to have to be. Ben? Well, I think Madame's question was, is it going to make, would it make much of an effect in the election? I wonder, is Mr. Zogby still on the line with us? Yes, John is there. Uh, is there a substantial constituency that votes uh, mostly based on foreign policy positions? Not mostly based on foreign policy, but uh, basically, this could be a winner for Democrats if... Um, if, uh, if they target voters under 35 who are mainly more global, more multilateral in foreign policy, uh, are more inclined towards the end of empire uh, point of view than they are towards American exceptionalism. And that is, a, that is an area, incidentally, where Democrats really need to, to pick up support as opposed to I know. Know, support. Yeah, One no, of the no. debates will deal with foreign policy. But, but, I, but I want to go back to this. I mean, if suppose Mr. Romney came up, I suppose Mr. Romney came across as incredibly good, just unbelievably good on foreign policy, and just shocked everybody on how knowledgeable he was about foreign policy, would that be decisive for him among any of the major blocks that are not now for him? Well, what it could do is help him, uh, you know, especially among voters over 60 who are uh, still supportive of Romney, but are wavering just a little bit, uh, you know, on the, on the, the Medicare issue the, uh, and, and the, the Romney-Ryan ticket. Well, I want to thank you all. We'll have a wrap-up. We'll, we'll, let's do one wrap-up question. Um, is it too early? To, uh, we, will the debate... Is it too early to call this, John? Yes, it is too early. Howard? Absolutely. A lot of things can happen, and let's, uh, you got to play the game. Ben, you're just going the other way. Our Republican conservative. Uh, I, I, I wish it were close. I wish it were close. I wish there were a real chance for Romney to win. I 
support him. I'd be very happy if he won, but uh, I cannot I cannot see it unless something dramatic changes. If he wins, would you join his administration? No, no, no. I told you I have to stay home with my dog. <laughs> what if he allowed your dog, if you put your dog on top of your car? And no, I, see, I, 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 would, I would never put my dog walk. on top okay. of my Maybe car. Maybe he'll build that, an elevator for no, him. I, yeah, I, I, no, I, I can't leave my dog. Leslie, too early to call? I think it's too early to call when you talk about Truman and Dewey and the front page of the paper said Dewey wins, especially when you look at how close Ohio and Florida are, and that's what it's going to come down to. And David. Larry, a final thought would be don't discount those social media users. Those tweeters, those, tweeters, those Facebookers, they are also voters. Absolutely. And remember, I want to thank everyone at UCLA for their cooperation Yay, with UCLA. us. UCLA. You guys did great. I want to thank Barbara and Darby and Sophia. You notice I'm not saying last names because they're impossible <laughs> to pronounce. <laughs> Cecilia, Ryan, Antonio, Kenneth, Elizabeth, Sarah, Darren, Cena. Laura, James, and Mary. We want to thank all of you who uh, tweeted to us, all of you who are involved in this. We'll be on following every debate. We'll have to have our panelists back for all that. We'll be calling on Mr. Zogby again and Howard Bragman, and, of course, uh, David and his great knowledge with regard to the Internet, David Begno. I'm Larry King of Aura TV. you watch us nightly on Hulu. We'll be back again on YouTube following the first debate. For everyone here in Los Angeles, thanks for watching and a Good night.